Welcome back to the most professional StarCraft 2 where I'm excited to introduce one of my favorite players from over 10 years ago. And still one of my favorite players today in the top right, the human zergling. It's Dong Regu. DRG. Up against a very different sort of player, an up and comer. New to the top tier, but the blue Protoss, it's Nightmare. The Surgeon. A best of three, BVZ. And these two players, absolutely different ends of the StarCraft II spectrum indeed. If you want something ridiculous, sloppy, and exciting, or something surgical and meticulous and masterfully executed, well, you're likely to find at least one of the two, especially if you like and subscribe. And Jimmy, one th 1,263 likes on this cast, on this series. A and I'll cast another one. And I'll probably do it anyways. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get just a little bit better. As uh, Nightmare has been revolutionizing Protoss lately. He still suffers from the consistency uh, struggles that essentially every Protoss does. Hero... The best about it, but by no means uh, perfect himself. But whereas uh, DRG just, it feels like he still plays like it's 2000 and at max 14. Because he, he will build some of those late game hive units occasionally. But if he can get the job done with Zerglings and Banelings, by God, he's going to find a way to do it. And even then, sometimes he'll try it anyways. It's both admirable and somewhat concerning at how unwilling he is to change from that style. But who knows? Maybe here today. Oracle pokes by. It is an Oracle out of Nightmare, who, uh, honestly, Nightmare reminds me the most of Astraea, the American Protoss, in his style, with just perfectly set up bases, the right unit compositions, Incredibly complex armies that look amazing when they work and kind of fall apart easily when they don't. But we'll see if his plan can survive contact with DRG Zerglings. I'm just assuming. I'm assuming it's going to be Zerglings. I'm usually right. Plus one melee attack is on the way. Stalker combined with the Oracle takes out the Overlord. And look at this layout. He's built a a tech shield here, funneling potentially Zerglings that get inside. You know, plan for the worst. All right, hope for the best, plan for the worst. And Nightmare here, walling off his own main nexus, just in case those Lings get in. Meanwhile, DRG, Lair on the way. Lost a couple drones, taking a fourth base now. Has been able to successfully uh, discourage the oracles from too much damage. That will continue. Plus one and blink is the choice for Nightmare. Roach Warren for DRG. Acknowledging that indeed uh, he may need something more than just the Zerglings. Especially if it's something like Adept Follow-Up or Charge Lots. In this case it's not. And, and now learning that this mineral wall has indeed been mined. A Zergling. I haven't had it. Probe turns around. More Zerglings on the way over. Um, well, this is conspicuous. Yeah. <laughs> they were looking to deny a fourth base, but found a proxy pylon that I think was going to be used to uh, reinforce a, a blink attack. Plus one and blink are being chrono boosted out. Getting him out in a timely manner is absolutely critical. Uh, for both defense and any potential pressure. DRG 67 drones, and now building roaches. He's got roach speed on the way, still has that melee attack upgrade. Adepts are able to shade back. But now this is the phase where they both kind of have to figure out, is there going to be any opportunity to get damage done? Because with blink and plus one, nightmare. How many gates? Seven gates. So a solid count. He could definitely... Attack across. He doesn't have any gases at his third. So likely he wants to continue unit production. At least for the near future. Meanwhile, though, DRG going to encourage that himself. 
there are still three oracles on the field, so coming across the map is a bit of a risky endeavor. And an infestation pit on the way. Oh, I really thought he was just going to take down the rocks. That was such a smooth blink. Oh, beautiful. Silky. Moving on. Slams down a revelation. And... Starting to clear up the creep here. Stasis to cover a potential retreat path. So the stalker is getting closer and closer. DRG just circumvents the problem entirely. Targeting down the queens. Ooh. Triggers a stasis. But wait, there's more. Are there any down here, though? A bit of an oversight. The Zerglings now growing in number. Nightmare being chased down. Lights up the oracles will burn through the Ravagers. Realizing he does indeed have the tools. You know, he could possibly save himself with the stasis in this scenario. Queens almost kill an oracle. DRG comes in again, but Nightmare ain't no hero. Not only does he have one, he has three units in the wall. Just making absolutely sure that those lings don't get in. I do love that base layout. Oh, he's kind of slapping the extraneous pylons in. Does he have charge? No charge. Nightmare doesn't sully himself with silly melee units like the Zerg. But instead, well, he does have a few zealots. But instead, Colossi with extended thermal lamps. A hive for DRG. The Vipers, always useful. And especially against Colossi. Zerglings coming in again. 65 on the field, 32 in production. Quickly reaching that triple digit mark. I expect adrenal glands immediately upon the hive completing. And then maybe vipers. But zergling upgrades come first. Yep. Adrenal glands. No, not vipers. Ultralisks. <laughs> oh, DRG. Ah, never disappointed. Vipers are for nerds. Though he does see the Colossi now, which means he might have to become a nerd himself. The Oracles again. Ah. Yet again. Oh. Oh. Almost takes down one. Still no Vipers in production for DRG. Despite seeing the Colossi, he may just go for the old-fashioned way of just cutting through everything else and knocking him down. The Ultralisk can shrug off the Colossus attacks. Of course, the Zerglings cannot. Uh, but you build enough of them. I guess it solves the problem. <sighs> Zerglings with plus three melee. Coming up. Adrenal glands. The Zealot's caught. He doesn't... Oh, he does have charge. He does have charge time. Nightmare setting up his stasis ward, his, his perfectly set up attack, whereas DRG's entire strategy is to either get in the base and, and murder everything, or just battering ram his way through the army. Those are the choices. He has no vipers, he has no infestors, and he's in the natural mineral lock. Seven probes dead so far. Nightmare though, gonna try to get something done. Three Ultras in production. The Zerglings were cleaned up. So, seven probes dead, but Nightmare's still plenty in dealing with this. Three Immortals at a time. I do think that's the right call. A couple Colossi to clear the Lings, and then Immortals to clear the rest. Uh, I actually really like how Nightmare is building up his army composition. I also really like how DRG is building up his army composition. But not in the theoretical sense, in the entertaining StarCraft sense. It's a different one. Nightmare with a fleet beacon. Psy Storm on the way. Looking to clear the creep. DRG has... Ultralis on the field. Ultralis can just bash through the stasis. They will not be caught by them, they're far too large. Um, I'm like 90. Brando, Brando, where are you going? I'm done with this shit. All right, build a viper. I...
the ultras wade through. Some of the roaches are caught. DRG doesn't care. Mainlings into the natural. He'll go through. And he does. The ultras chewing. Oh my god. Absolutely obliterated by the firing line of immortals. Oh my. Those ultras dead on arrival. The roach is happy they were stuck in the stasis for that experience. And DRG will build plenty to replace them. 60 more Zerglings in production. Mothership for Nightmare. And the Zerglings eventually got in. That planning pays off. The Stalkers, optimistic. Some stasis over there manages to trigger both with a single set of wings. Whatever was over here um, cleared up. I think some Zealots easily chewed up by the Ultras. Three more Immortals on the way. Triple Immortal Production. Mothership up against Ultras and Zerglings. And once again, very notably, no Vipers. No Vipers to pull up. Oracles light up to burn through the Chitinous Plenty of the Ultra. But he just takes down the gate. The Roach is over here. Shield battery. Look at this overlapping defense from Nightmare. Absolutely beautiful. The Ultras come in and try to fight half a dozen Immortals. Still not an ideal choice. Some of the Immortals get caught by the Roaches. DRG's like, so, we've tried. We've tried. Eight, eight Ultras and 270 Lings. All right, we've tried it. But, hear me out, hear me out. But, what if we tried more Ultras and Lings? Never change, DRG. I wasn't going to! Okay. Maybe some Queens in there. All right, heal them up. I mean, they have to be on creep, so, well... They can solve that problem themselves. Meanwhile, more immortals. A mothership is done. DRG adding ultras and queens and zerglings and banelings. Not a single non-queen spell ca caster here in the army. We've got six ultras on the field, 75 zerglings. Nightmare has the most anti-ultraling bane army he could build. Besides, I guess, like, Mass Carrier. But arguably, this is better because it can actually fight them instead of just letting them run over the entire ground. Nine Immortals. He's got more than one Immortal for every Ultra. He's got the Colossi. He's got Storm. On paper, Nightmare has absolutely everything he needs to obliterate this army. But we don't play on paper. Ultras on both flanks. This army is incredibly powerful for how relatively small it looks. Size does matter, but not enough. Time warp to zone out one side. The Queens, cloaking field activated. Nightmare just hanging out. He's got money in the bank, as does DRG, but a lot less of uh, the Vespine gas. Greater Spire on the way, as DRG will reach into his pocket and find yet another non-spellcaster unit, but this one, at least a little more advanced. Potentially Broodlords. Oh, the Banelang's hit by the storms, but they'll be close enough. The Ultra's the only ones that aren't caught by the Stasis, which is a remarkable way to isolate them for the Immortals. The Queen's also trying to get involved. Somehow, DRG is still competitive in this fight. He also got obliterated over to the left side, but like, hear me out. Okay, guys, hear me out. I know we lost all the Ultras and all the Zerglings, but, but I can feel it. What if, hear me out, more Ultras and Zerglings. And here we are, the Bloodstalkers over the top block the Ultra from escaping. But what if, guys, okay, I've got that. And three Broodlords. Okay, we'll try We'll try Randy's idea. Three Broodlords. They don't work. We're going back to my play. Ultras and Zerglings. Oh. <laughs> Dear dude, the thing is, Nightmare has been unable to really make any progress. He's been sitting at his base. Defending. Pretty much the entire game. Yes, DRG may have lost... 7,000 more resources. And, and a whole lot of that being gas. But DRG also has 
seven ultralisks. There's still six immortals building three at a time. Here come the carriers. He's going to have plus three air weapons before the carriers are pretty much revealed. Well, close to it. He's been building up towards the carriers. The, obviously, the ultras don't care very much. Oh! <laughs> this is stasis. Well, you can't catch the ultras in the stasis, but... You can catch so many Zerglings, it acts as a force field, which... And that Zergling is very unhappy about it. That is certainly, um... I guess, technically an option. Another stand. <laughs> this is... <gasps> He's up the Viper. Is that a misclick? One Viper. From DRG. A, uh, ill potent. Portent. Not potent. A fell omen that even DRG is forced to build. Not none, but one viper. And even neural parasect. Maybe not. Maybe any other building. Not this hatch. DRG, it doesn't have to be the hatch. You could do anything else. Or nothing is also fine, I guess. And here's all the ultras. More broods on the way. The carriers! Where are the carriers? Here's some carriers. Um, well, the Viper did his feedback immediately. DRG, though, is, uh, hmm. He just, he, he runs over a base. He's just kind of ignoring these immortals. He just chews through. That's a lot of Templar with a lot of energy. This is getting so weird. Uh, the Broodlords are working on the ground. There's not enough anti-air to deal with the carries. He's building 13 more Corruptors. The Ultras won the fight. They killed everything back at home. But Nightmare is mostly... He has plus three air and plus two shields. And the Ultras are fighting cannons, which they're pretty good against. But here come the Stalkers. And DRG is quite literally out of gas. And, and just taps out of the game. Wow. Um, hmm, 22 Ultras later. Fe appears Nightmare figured it out. Um, <laughs> just don't die until you build the most perfectest anti-Zerg army. Like upgraded carriers, plenty of Templar, bunch of immortals, cannons everywhere. And eventually DRG... I mean, he tried the Broodlords, but I'll be honest, that he, he, he tried the Broodlords so he could check the Broodlord box. He didn't try the Broodlords as, like, a unit composition. But I'm going to have to go back to the spawning pool, as he always does, I think. The beauty of it is I feel like there was a real danger of it working for a while there. Like, one particularly bad fight. But Nightmare, if he's able to prepare, like... He was, he was at least two or three steps ahead of DRG that entire game. Which puts you at risk of lapping him and ending up behind. Um, but Nightmare, at no point it, did it feel like he was uh, in a particularly bad spot. So that, I think, puts DRG in a rough position going forward. And that's clearly... Well, does he try something earlier? Because that would be... He's building a lot of Zerglings. Is it just a Zerg rush? And by a lot, I mean like eight banks early. He he did take the third. A probe denied the Natchery. So. Ah, yes. The classic, how about a bunch of... It's what we like to call a Zerg rush. Which almost feels cliche at this point, but... Uh, well... Huh. Why don't... I don't know. Alright. Hear me out. Just walk a bunch of Zerglings into their base and kill the pylon that powers both the gateway and warp gate. Like, no, you can't just do that. This isn't the gold league. The, hmm. Well... This is one of those strategies that works better because Nightmare is such a high-level player. Like, 
On paper, this shouldn't do anything. But instead, DRG just keeps building links. Like, Nightmare's over here with his perfectly mapped out build, and DRG just holds down the Z key. Well, this is... This is very bad for Nightmare. Now, it's not free, by the way. Wait, did he put the pylon in the wrong spot? Is that what the source of this is? So... I take it all back. That pylon, I think, is slightly too far forward. Which, since you can't lift your or uproot your pylons, results... I think... I, I, maybe I'm not giving DRG enough credit. DRG may have realized that pylon was in the wrong spot. Which, since Protoss cannot build doors... Um... Uh has resulted in... Wait, no, that's the second pilot. The first pilot died. I don't even remember what's going on anymore. Please, Jimmy, edit this part out. I don't... Maybe the first pilot was in the right spot and it just died because... What am I doing? What, am I insane? Like, that's not the first pilot. He killed the first... I'm losing it. Oh, my God. Oh. Um... Like and subscribe so I can afford help. I can't believe I just forgot he killed the pylon, and I'm, like, commenting like that's the first one. I am. Wow, that's embarrassing. Anyways, the Oracle and Void Ray combination end up killing a lot while I was too busy contemplating my short-term memory loss. Um, There's a Depth Glaives on the way. A Stasis. No, don't. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, wow. The clown fiesta continues. Stasis wards, the real MVPs in this series so far. Especially considering they don't actually kill anything, but the amount that they've affected the battle has been incredibly remarkable. So now we have Adept Glaives on the way. No third yet for Nightmare, though he's trying for it. The Twilight is just chilling at the natural. The little foyer he's built here. Uh, by the totally not first pylon. 20 more Zerglings on the way, realizing the threat the Adepts pose. And already a Baneling Nest and plus one melee. So, DRG is not going to be unequipped here. Void Ray back at home, at least providing some guaranteed defense. The Oracle almost dies as it tries to keep things busy at the fourth. And... So... Adept Glaives are always quite a thing. They range from game throwing to game ending. Um, they usually land somewhere in the middle. Because it's such a dramatic difference between finding a mineral line and eviscerating the drones and potentially shading a little too far and losing all your adepts. So far, decent amount of drone kills, forcing a whole lot of lings out of DRG. But... This is quite late in the game, which means that DRG already had a lot of economy and he had a lot of queens out there in order to inject and just general defense. So the Glaives not really finding that opportunity to do critical damage before DRG has the defense. Brenda, come come back here. Stay on the crease, please. How many to Oh my God. Okay, fine. Oracle coming in again. Oracle has eight kills, but um, where are you going? You just mind controlled it. That was an odd turn. Oracle goes down, and that means that all these Zerglings that DRG built, mostly to defend the Adepts, now have a much freer path to uh, attacking across the map. So DRG does have a lair, but no Bane Speed, either on the way or in general. So, an awkward spot. Nightmare warped in a whole lot of Stalkers. So, Blink is about to finish. Plus one is only just now started. Plus one Carapace. Here's a Void Ray. 18 kills, by the way. Just kind of slowly burning through everything. I think several Creep Tumors as well. Fourth base is... Uh, canceled. Infestation pit on the way for Deer Get. What a, what a absolute disaster piece of a game this has been so far. Uh, DRG making these games so sloppy. Mmm, can't get it off. The Adepts, the Zerglings, possible. Well, 
What? What is it? What in the Scooby-Doo? Alright, so the stalkers blink to block the Zerglings, which allows the Zerglings to get us around and kill. And oh, there's also a Void Ray. And there's more Zerglings over here. Uh, go straight for the shield battery. Stalker's not the greatest counters to Wings. Gonna kill a lot of them. It's unclear who's really flaking who. The Adept's actually really important right now. So many Stalkers died to Zerglings. The Void Ray continues. A Warp Prism? Gonna just warp in. Oh, what are you gonna warp in? Adept. All right. But then cancels it because the Sport Crow is able to reposition. He's on top of the fourth. Just right clicked with the Zerglings. I think he's gonna get it. Oh my god, no! The Stalkers! Well, it's permanently damaged unless... Well, no, there's, it's permanently damaged. So it's gonna be easier to take out later. Another... Uh, just gonna be chased down on the other side. Zerglings on top of it. Stalkers at the front. Roaches. <sighs> Even more lings. 2-2 two, two on the way. Poor DRG. The, the Void Ray's up to 21 kills. Stalker's blinking back, but it feels like DRG is in a much better position here, especially with Adrenal Glands on the way. How many Robos? Just the one Robo. Nightmare is fighting with... Blink Stalkers against better upgraded Zergling Roach, which he has so many. He has 30 st Hey, Blunks forward. A lot of those Stalkers at the front probably not happy about that decision. Plus two melee is done now. Banelings ro ro rolling in. Nightmare not looking at all and down a little late. Gonna find some more 19 probes down. And that is terrible, terrible damage to the economy. All right. Wow. Um, he's going to try to do a big, hopefully game-ending counterattack. And DRG's making a surprising amount of roaches to defend against it. The circling to it again. All right. And the base is just gone. Even without adrenal glands, more than enough lings surround and kill it. Meanwhile, adepts sneak through. And, well, he's got to blink his way out of this situation. Maybe he can just close his eyes and wake up in a better reality. The Zerglings should be able to take out the base. Adrenal glands done. Still some adepts, a surprising amount of drones. Stalkers block out to the roach. His fourth base going to die, right? Maybe? We'll see. Uh, adepts killing more drones. Stalkers kind of doing okay in the center, but the fourth base is gone. DRG is actually losing. Well, uh, wait. What's happening? The army supplies are weirdly close to even. DRG actually, for the first time in a long time, needs more zerglings. Yeah, the roaches and lings. It's 2-2 two -two with adrenal glands, though. Eventually, the zerglings should clean this up. The adepts still fighting. There's more adepts finding a place at this relatively late stage. The stalkers onto the drones. The drones have to keep running. The refugee drones have been running for a while now. Queen changed the void ray has 29 kills. Legend has it that when that void ray dies, Nightmare will finally tap out of the game. Charges up. Void Ray fighting. Not paying attention. Oh no! Revenge! No, he didn't leave. Alright, well, it's not gonna be much longer now. Wow. DRG just rely. Roaches, Zerglings, and Queens. Oh my. And far too many of them. He can't save all the stalkers. That's it. We're all tied up. DRG. Oh my. Um, on brand, yet again, Nightmare, set off by the early pylon drama, and DRG just kept throwing Zerglings at him. Oh, the Zerg rush is successful.
at the end of the day, though there were a few extra steps by the end, I will I, I will acknowledge. Okay, and now the decider. I don't know what you do after that one if you're Nightmare. Maybe really, really focus on having your wall done. <laughs> that feels to me like either the wall is done or DRG wins. I feel like that's so far how to define this series. So we go into game three. The wall's not quite done. A bunch of Zerga. Is he gonna... He's kind of gonna try it again, but... A much harder map to make it work on, I think. This is annoying. Really? So this helps keep track of the Zerga. But now there's six lings. Yeah. He's just keeping tabs on him here. Smart move. Ah. Adept dies. Not ideal. Stargate. Building an oracle. Third base. All right, DRG. The question is not if, but when the Zerglings are built on mass. Gets the probe, despite it trying to hide behind the adept in the mineral wall there, or mineral walk. Not gonna happen. DRG will find you and he will kill you, no matter how many Zerglings it takes. And sometimes it takes a lot of Zerglings. Oracle comes in, kills two drones. Takes critical damage. Actually, might at. I... <laughs> uh, what a little shit, right? Karen, yes, but also, don't be rude. I don't... Wow, that one was bad. So, one of my medium level pet peeves, of which I have so many, is Protoss coming in with the Oracle, killing two drones, and then being in like red or deep orange HP for the rest of the game. Losing the Oracle is certainly... Well, there's three, and he's in the yellow. I'll, I'll allow this one, but... Losing that first Oracle is remarkably... Um, lazy. Not even lazy, but just significant mismicro. Oracles are a bit unwieldy when it comes to microing. They have very... Uh, uh, relatively long acceleration. Starting and stopping, not their strong suits, but... Uh, feels very satisfying to actually pick one off, though. Ten more drones on the way. Melee attack. Looks like we're going to play it out in a similar fashion so far. Minus the Super Zerg Rush. And DRG killing that Oracle. So far has allowed him to just explode in the drone count. And having over 60 drones, as you go in towards the lair, essentially unpressured, is going to be a nice economy to springboard off of. Another base. May try to burn it out. It's such obvious, but like, he, he, he throws it down there, he knows it's not gonna finish. The Oracle is in a precarious position to quit. Let me at him! Oh my god, another one! We got two! Another all right, well, that nightmare becoming uh this series becoming a bit of himself right now. Ah, uh, these are not mistakes you can afford to make against someone who will be like delaying the fourth base by twenty seconds is not worth losing an oracle and a bunch of adepts against someone who's going to make mass circles. It's just not. It's very simply not. They are mistakes that are um, hard not to make when it's right in front of your face like that. But also, there's no blink. There's no blink. There's only one Oracle, DRG. Kills just two stalkers, but he'll do it again. Infestation. DRG, one of the only players I, I've seen rush Hive explicitly for adrenal glands, and that's it. Like, it's a good upgrade, but usually you at least get a Viper or two. No. Adrenal glands and plus three melee. 
maybe an ultra cavern. Infestors would be very helpful here. Against blink stalkers? But you know it's better than two infestors? 80 more zerglings. Same effect. Kill the uh, stalkers. Nightmare, very bold on these blinks. Like, how many? What is the ratio of stalkers to zerglings to be successful? That's the question. I think 10 zerglings for one stalker. Yes, the costs don't exactly add up, but the stalkers, it's more important to reach critical mass because the surface area of the zerglings is reduced when you have enough stalkers. Like, they can't get to the stalkers in the center of the army because there's so many stalkers on the outside. So if you keep trading, I think that favors the zerglings overall. And zerglings only cost minerals. So that is a very key point. But Nightmare with quite a sizable Blink Stalker force, which means he doesn't have very much at all at home. The Stalkers are coming in. Gonna try to trade fourth bases. DRG actually just left the base, but he left the drones there. Hmm. Stalkers get the base first. Blinking forward. The Zerglings will take it out. I think they'll clean up some of the gateway units here as well. A whole bunch of the creep can be cleaned up. And Adrenal Glands on the way. That is the only Hive Tech upgrade. This is such a weird scenario. How many Zerglings? Only 30 on the field. Against 27 Stalkers? Ultraless Cavern is the second piece of hive tech. Well, baneling speed is on the way. No banelings yet. Not that banelings are... Oh, and here comes some zerglings trying to catch the stalkers blinking back. No adrenal glands, but... Huh. <laughs> I, I love this. Stasis war to protect the proxy pylon. Does DRG know about the proxy? He doesn't. DRG does have that fourth up. More lings on the way. He's running through every bit of larva. Ah, the stasis works! Traps enough of the lings that he can blink forward. Oracle trying to come in. Kiteness plating on the way. Ultralist, of course. A beautiful choice. A hefty one indeed. Neither of those things really giving them extra strength in battle, though. Ultralis w without infestors or vipers, okay against Blink Stalkers. Uh, it's more of a quantity being a quality all its own kind of situation. Especially against... Like, there's not even a robo. He's just now building a robo. It's not going to be three immortals at a time. It's going to be no immortals at a time, which is significantly less. The Zerglings catch the Blink Stalkers on the bounce. Gonna try to get away, but so many stalkers will be absolutely eviscerated by their claws. Try to recall out. Only half their number make it. Nightmare, like, what? He's been corrupted by DRG. He's only making blink stalkers. Maybe a few zealots. Doesn't even have charge, though. But gateway units just don't stack up in the same way. DRG is maxed out. He's fighting heads up, and why not? A uh, couple Ravagers. The Oracle left over here. Ultra's trundling across. Kindness plating is now done. The Ultra's just show up. Using them as meat shields. And indeed, they work out quite well. Zerglings into the third. Zerglings streaming across. Ultra's just wandering in. The Zealots are trying to fight. The Zerglings are winning. But enough Zealots with Stalker support. Actually, well, Nightmare. Huh. Um, has a pretty healthy amount of supply. I mean, killing all those ultras. It's still, though, keeping this much intact. How many gates? Only seven gates. He's been very diligent about um, continuing to warp in. Some banes on the way. So there's a real chance Nightmare is able to put together that kind of critical mass of army. 
That makes it so difficult for this more melee-oriented Zerg to actually break. As DRG has yet to show any indication of vipers or investors. Not even hinting at the Broodlords. It is just Ultraling Bane. More Zerglings and more Banelings. Three Immortals at a time, if those can finish. And, and a, a Stasis. A it's perfect. Exactly perfect. There are even some units trapped in there. What a maddening stasis. That it's a it's one of those that it's perfect, but also it's so much that DRG just left him. Now he's coming back as the stasis runs out. Uh, and he's just gonna combine everything together. The probes are on the run, but they're not fast enough. A dozen dead. Four immortals now. But DRG is maxed. The Immortals kind of stuck out there. Again, a stasis. But it doesn't kill the units. It only stops them temporarily. And now the Zerglings are streaming in from the north. That base is absolutely gone. The Ultras are chewing through. Another Immortal in the center of everything gets uh, just eviscerated by the Ultras. And DRG runs the field in DRG's signature style. 350 Zerglings dead, and he'd do it again in a heartbeat. The Ultras, Lings, and Bates, that old school Zerg powers through. <sighs> Beautiful to watch, kind of frustrating at the same time, but either way, I think, incredibly entertaining. I hope that made your day as much better as it did mine. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you got the means and motivation, it'd be awesome to check out Patreon or YouTube membership as well. But I hear liking and subscribing. Still free for now. Check it out. Recommended. Very helpful for the next cast. And if you haven't yet, the second channel for streams and VODs and all that other extra content if you can't get enough. Uh, thank you for watching, though. I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay tuned.